but hit up Long Beach Beer Lab. See what's going on down there. See what's, see what's popping off. See what's good. I'm fucking crazy, man. <laughs> Am I the only nigga like me? I ain't got no friends on the IB. Never felt this lonely. Nobody gonna find me on the downstream. Down with all the haters and the low fiend. Papa Molly and the cocaine. So this is the Redhead Retention uh, here at Long Beach Beer Lab, uh, Afro Beer Guru episode two. Just chilling, doing our thing. So as far as reds go, I like this one pretty dry. Um, it's a little drier than other ones I've had, a little bit less malty, a little bit less, less of the body. Kind of tasty, I dig it. I would say that what really makes this one special is the top note. Uh, there's really, oh, the word I'm thinking about is crisp. Super crisp on the top note. You know, I'm kind of a seltzer water addict, so I love that crisp, crisp flavor on uh, in beverages, so. With this music, uh, I just get such a nostalgia for some of those NorCal places, uh, some of those country, country little breweries that they got up there. Yeah, baby. Yeah, hell yeah. Neutral transmittance. Let's see what's going on. Triple oat cream, triple hazy, triple IPA. So first off, thank you so much for checking out this video. I am the Afro Beer Guru. And uh, I am a musician, poet, um, writer, general writer. Uh, I write screenplays, I take photos, I do a lot of stuff. Main thing is playing uh, bass. Uh, let me see, yeah, those two guys right there. That is pointing, I'm pointing at Betty, and that is Esperanza right there. Oh, those are my ladies right there. So this channel is, uh, it's, it's a channel where we just, we taste beer, we drink beer, and uh, I also, I also do uh, whiskey and wine as well too, uh, and different alcohols, but beer is kind of what uh, we're going to focus on in this channel. I'm also just going to just talk, you know, uh, talk about various things while I'm drinking the beer. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's meant to be more of a vibe thing. Uh, definitely going to be some good details about the beer and kind of where it's come from, but uh, also just just some you know just just entertainment you know it's just just hanging but if you want to learn more about who i am uh check out uh my instagram check out my music and my poetry check me out at at ghost m style on instagram let's get into it we're listening to oliver nelson stolen moments I'm gonna open this up and we're gonna see what's going on inside it i chose this one uh because the uh um, the the lovely gentleman, Josh from Long Beach uh, Beer Lab, who was an awesome dude to talk to, he uh, gave me a taster of this guy. I immediately felt my brain, all the kind of the, the little fizzers in there, jump out or jump around. So I felt felt really, it was super, super fascinating to really taste. So, and I'm really sort of curious to see what's going to taste like out of the can. I usually, I'm, I'm not a huge can guy, but... Uh, I really do think there's a taste difference. Uh, people may kind of disagree with me on that, uh, but it's just some like a weird thing with me. But here, let's give it a shot. Wow, there's a lot of stuff going on in this guy. It's you know what kind of struck me at the uh, at at Long Beach Beer Lab when I, when I was there was just just kind of the just the complexity of flavors that were happening at the same time, but in this really pleasurable way. Um, uh, I really, you know, initially got the kind of mix of sweetness and the seltzery and and the lemon kind of uh, kind of things kind of jumping out. I thought it was very 
very electric kind of taste. There was this buzziness going on. I think it was maybe tasted a little fresher uh, on tap, but uh, this this still just in the can again. I'm not a huge can guy, although it's better for the environment. Still, still very interesting. Super interesting mix of uh, balance, balance of different flavors going off. It's 11%, but it doesn't really taste that. So the more you kind of dig into it, the more you realize, you, the more I get more of that OD flavor out of it, the more that there, there is that kind of odiness. It's kind of like when you have um, a bowl of oatmeal in the morning, um, that kind of freshness. And I think maybe there's an association with, uh, probably in my mind, with kind of waking up uh, since, you know, we tend to have oatmeal in the morning uh, with uh, coffee. And the vanilla kind of evens it out. Uh, there's a really pleasurable sultriness on the on the in the body. It kind of sparkles in your in your mouth a little bit. What's what's interesting about Long Beach Beer Lab is that they're also uh, a bakery, so you get that really really good bready quality, that kind of that breadiness in the in your taste buds, that kind of dance of ryeness and all all that bakiness on it. I think every brewery has kind of like a little, kind of a signature um, underlying kind of vibe to it. Uh, be it be it the quality of the the water used, the the nature of the process of the making it. There was this one winery I remember going to uh, a couple of years ago that was called Halter Ranch, and that they they made a lot of their their wine, or they housed it, or they processed it. In these stone uh, areas, these stone little carriers, and so everything had this really great mineral quality, and that's one thing I really love about drinking uh, and alcohol is that minerality. That minerality is, I think, super important, and it's something that missing that is missing from a lot of uh, lesser uh, drinks. So one thing that I particularly uh, pay attention to when I'm drinking is just the quality of the underlying essence of the of the liquid. You know, what is it? Is it? Is there a minerality to it? Are all these flavors in a good carrier? You know, sometimes you'll have a good beer, but there'll be something kind of funky about either the water uh, quality or just something's just not really kind of feeling good about it. I'm about halfway through this guy, and I really, it's it's. Doesn't really feel like 11%. I mean, it's not exactly, you know, like a summer uh, beer or like a summer lager or anything like that. There's almost this kind of this kind of fruity to it, fruitiness to it, um, which I really associate with hazy IPAs. Um, not a huge fan of hazies in general. I think they tend to be a little bit, um, you know. I mean, it's such a huge thing now. I mean, every, fucking everything's hazy nowadays. You know. I think it's a little bit too fruity sometimes. Like it's it feels too I'm more of a kind of darker beer rounder brown stouts double box you know things with a little bit more roundness to them a little bit more maltiness but this one is kind of like it's 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 a hazy it's 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 triple hazy so it's like super hazy it's a super icy um, IPA but it doesn't have that kind of overcooked taste of a lot of IPAs to me I think a lot of IPAs especially triple IPAs can just feel like you're getting you know you're like eating pine cones or some shit a lot of kind of like burst of like this kind of this this kind of like you know i remember years ago i had uh i can't remember i had this super triple ipa um and uh i can't remember what the brewer was you know i probably shouldn't say anyway but anyway i had their super ipa and i remember i got super sick that night so and i and i think sometimes like you we we develop certain associations with with a food or or a drink depending on uh you know sometimes if we have like a bad experience you know with uh you know with getting sick with it or even if something else happens if you know we're we're you know there's something some kind of emotional event happens while we're you know having the drink or the food so i'm thinking about doing some working on some some christmasy yells uh, yeah this, this this is this is really really sneaking up on me the one criticism i would have for this guy is maybe that it's it's a little bit of a it's, it's, it doesn't really go that 
it, it, it does what it needs to do, um, and it does what it advertises it's supposed to do. But there's not a lot of, uh, not, not too many surprises at the bottom of it. But you can't really expect uh, that out of every beer. You know, some beers are more, they, you know, they kind of hit, do what they need to do. So this is an OD beer. It's, 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 it's an IPA, and there's a balance to it. There's a, it, there's a flow to it, but there's not necessarily, you know, there's not really going to, you're not going to find a lot of different types of notes, notes in it. And I can respect that, you know. Some, you know, not every beer that you're going to have is going to be like a freaking... <laughs> have that quality of like a old bottle of wine you know where you keep discovering new things and it's cool how you don't really you know with a lot of ipas i kind of get overwhelmed by the pininess of the of the hops you know as as, as time goes on you know i don't really feel like reaching for the beer anymore after a while but this one kind of it it it, it the vanilla quality and the creaminess kind of really balances it uh in a really clever way um, in the sense that you you, you want to keep drinking it, it's something that you can keep drinking for for a while. Yeah. This may be just a psychological association, like when you have oats and uh, and uh, fruit. I'm definitely tasting a little bit of a strawberry, a uh, red fruitiness going on in this guy. A little creeping in. It's a little creeper. What this also makes me think of is some really good ice cream, OD ice cream, um, some creative ice cream making. With the cover on it, you know, you get kind of almost this 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 uh, wintry, Christmassy kind of association in my mind. It has the delicate sweetness of French baked goods. It's it's, it's like you're having like a really good um, almond croissant or something like that, like super super delicate sweetness underneath the ip -ness, the IPA uh, energy on it, which uh, which I think is an interesting mix of flavors. Not something that I would imagine would really work, but this but this beer, I think, the, I think the, cre the creaminess brings it all together. Again, the creaminess and the quality of the, of the process. There's this excellence in the quality of how the beer is made, where it can make make flavors that you know possibly would really taste terrible uh actually make you know actually come together you know so it's process and it's 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 the quality of the ingredients coming together to make things really happen so this as far as announcements uh as it pertains to ghost mine and my art, artistic efforts i'm i'm gonna be releasing a single at, at the beginning of next month december uh called onlm and uh, if you're wondering what that means, you'll have to uh, look at my Instagram and you'll uh, have to check out the, the uh, single when it comes out. I'm going to put this guy on, on Bandcamp in SoundCloud, I think. Keep it kind of underground for now. Uh, it's a really raw, emotional song. Uh, feelings that I don't think I've ever expressed publicly before. Um, or really even privately. And when you're doing that type of stuff, you know, I mean, Spotify is good. I've had, you know, a decent time going through DistroKid and all that. But um, I think this one, I think I'm going to keep keep it underground for a little bit. This song's for the real heads, you know. It's, it's you know, it's for the real fans and, and for the people who really want to know uh, what the real shit is. You know, the real, the fucking real music, real uh, expression, you know. So, so if that's you... Uh, it's going to be on Bandcamp and SoundCloud. Hell yeah, motherfucker. And it's, you know, one of the things I love, love about California beers uh, is how creative this shit is, you know. There is something to be said for, you know, when you find a beer that you really fucking like and it's simple and it's an ingredient that's been around like the old fucking monks when they have those old um, ingredients that they have, you know, that they've had for centuries, you know, that's, 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 that's really cool, you know, I mean, if it works, uh, you know, don't break what works, or, uh, you know, yeah, but there's also something to be said for experimentation and trying new shit, and I think this is a really good, uh, really good experiment, uh, for what's possible when you have really good processing and really good, uh, really good design. I'm also working on, on a lot of new poetry as well, too. Um, I got, uh, uh, I've, I've enjoyed getting all the responses from people to my poetry videos that I've done. 
gotten a lot of really great f feedback on that. I don't know. It's there's an interesting blending between uh, you know, the idea of making a post and making a poem, and you know what happens when it, it, it feels like you're doing both. We tend to think poems as kind of these static things that are in books, and uh, I feel I didn't really come upon poetry in that way necessarily. I originally was trying to put up my prose on Instagram, but uh, the story, as the story goes, I couldn't figure out how to uh, format it quickly. I started to just chop up prose, you know, and that's how we got to basically these 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 poems. I don't know if I'm even a poet technically, you know. I don't. I don't. Uh, I, mean, I haven't really studied the art, uh, and. I don't know, there's this, you know, again, that blending of, 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 you know, is this a post, is this a poem, is this, what is this, you know, like, what are we doing, is, is this a meme, is this, what is the really, the nature of what we're doing, and I kind of like that ambiguity, kind of discovering it along the way, which is basically what I'm doing with this. I'm really curious what this would taste like in a, in a bottle. I had it in, uh, on draft and it was really good. Uh, so it makes me think that we should do one of these at the actual brewery, spend, you know, 20 minutes there and really get a fucking, get a vibe on this. If you think that's a good idea, drop me a direct message either here on YouTube or Instagram. If you think there is, isn't a difference between drinking in a can or a bottle also, also uh, leave that in the comments below. I remember reading this 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 uh, st uh, this uh, in this book about Bukowski, where he talks about Charles Bukowski, the author. Uh, he talks about um, he actually mentioned that in one of his interviews, where he's talking about cans versus uh, bottles, and he said that he definitely noticed a difference, and he also preferred bottles. I recommend if you're anywhere near Long Beach, check out the tasting room. It's super cool. You know, it's still good in the can. Still tasty. Yeah, I definitely get that that uh, a little bit of the strawberry red fruit quality. Uh, it's especially toward the end of the beer. It's almost such like a strawberry icy or like a puree or, uh, puree or something like that. I'm thinking about going to Phantom Carriage next. Um, so if you want to meet me there, uh, holler. Um, if you're in the LA area and you just want to. Uh, and you want to meet up at a spot and talk some beer hit me up you know uh, I'm sure there's people who know a lot more about this than I do I'm just one dude who, uh, who likes beer and I'm going to talk about it um, and I'm going to talk about it and talk about all this shit you know enjoy <laughs> Afro Beer Guru